Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. So, a logic analyzer with compression sampling is extremely valuable. It makes, it um, maximizes your use of memory. Now, the best oscilloscope will have an incredibly deep memory, megabytes of memory, with a compression sampling system. That is the best scope you will get. But generally, uh, on the market, in the mid to low priced logic analyzers, you won't get that generally. Uh, your logic analyzers that use compression sampling will generally only have a couple of kilobytes or something like that of sample memory. So that means there's a trade-off with these small sample memory uh, logic analyzers. Don't be fooled into thinking that they're magic because they're not always magic, because uh, what it will do is if any one of your input channels changes, any one of your data channels changes, then it's going to actually uh, take a sample across all your channels. It's going to use up a byte. So if you've got one channel, which is clocking away, going really fast, and then you've got another uh, channel which is um, having you know having a slow data or it's got uh, widely spaced packets of data that you want to analyze then that fast input changing channel can chew up all your memory before you get a chance to view your next packet so in that case a deep memory sequential sampling uh, logic analyzer can be better now generally speaking uh, cheap USB logic analyzers, they really aren't a professional tool. Why? Well, because uh, probing and your input sampling is everything. Your input front end on a logic analyzer, just like an oscilloscope, you buy a cheap oscilloscope with some toy front end on it, you know, it's a crap oscilloscope. Same thing with logic analyzers. If you buy a cheap logic analyzer with cheap probes and a cheap input circuit, cheaply designed and made input circuit, it's not a serious tool. Why? Because there's so many issues involved with getting uh, a, a good signal integrity on the input to a logic analyzer. There's, there's noise, there's skew across channels, there's uh, transition times, there's metastability issues, there's all sorts of things. Input capacitance, inductance and rise time and fall time and crosstalk and all sorts of things that can actually affect your measurement. Now generally speaking, if you're forced to bring out your logic analyzer, it means you're getting pretty desperate. Your design's not working or it's 99% there and it's only the 1% that, you know, there's that is failing. There's a timing issue or something like that, a very subtle timing issue in your system uh, that you're trying to resolve. Now, really, hooking just the act of hooking up your logic analyzer to your circuit can change it, just like an oscilloscope. And if you're trying to measure, if you've got like a, a multi-channel system that you're trying to probe, and you probe one of the channels, it can make your system come good or make it go bad. So unless you've got a really high-priced, properly designed logic analyzer probe system, you're, you're, you're really kidding yourself. You've, you've really only got a toy. Now, there's nothing wrong with just having a toy logic analyzer. They're, they're useful for, you know, most jobs, really, uh, just for analyzing your I2C bus or something like that. But if you're into serious high speed, you know, 50, 100, couple hundred megahertz, something like that, these toy logic analyzer, USB logic analyzers really aren't going to cut it. Yet another decision you need to make when you're buying a logic analyzer is there's, once again, there's two different types. There's those that uh, capture and buffer the signals within the thing itself and then upload the data to the PC. Or there's the ones that uh, work in real time and they're the cheap ones. They're the, you know, your, your $100 ones or $50 or $100 ones. They're generally the ones that will just uh, really stream data in real time over your USB 2.0 interface and generally they're limited to you know 10 or 20 megahertz or something meg samples or something like that and that's because they stream data in real time now the advantage with those low cost ones that stream in real time is that you effectively have an infinite amount 
of sample memory. You've got your hard drive. You've, you've got a terabyte hard drive. Whoa! You know, fantastic. You can store a terabyte of damn data. It's incredible. So you've got unlimited buffer. That's the advantage with those ones over the ones that, these faster ones, which will actually um, have internal uh, sample memory and buffer it and then transfer it uh, later. Yet another thing to look for when you buy a logic analyzer, the whole host of things. The next thing is uh, make sure your logic analyzer supports pre and post triggering. It should actually capture half of the data, or maybe uh, selectable, the, it captures data before the trigger point and after the trigger point because often in a system you're triggering on a fault and you want to see the data that caused that fault. Another thing to look for in a logic analyzer is that it can actually uh, decode serial data in real time and trigger on serial data in real time. So it actually analyzes each bit like this and you can set it up to trigger on a particular uh, word or a particular byte. And this is most useful for you know, serial decoding, uh, I squared C and SPI and all those serial type buses once again. If your system supports those, then it's going to be super valuable for you. Now, generally a logic analyzer will come with these easy hook uh, probes. They're actually little tiny uh, probes that you pull down and they're a standard they just pull straight off here. Make sure your probe comes with, uh, your logic analyzer comes with these probes because they're most valuable. And make sure it comes with a good set of short, short, not long, uh, uh, probe wires. Because the longer, you, look, the ground on this, the longer you make that ground, the less reliable your signal integrity is going to be on the input to this thing. So you don't want super duper long uh, probes, you want them as short as possible. And I can't say it enough, probing on a logic analyzer is critical. Unlike, well, it's critical on an oscilloscope too, but at least you can see the problems, you can see the overshoot, the undershoot, the ring in, and, and, but, but you can't see it. On a logic analyzer, you're operating blind, completely blind. You have to trust this thing. So you have to know how to probe and keep them really short, and uh, preferably you might use a buffered probe, which will um, actually have a proper uh, buffer in there, but really your, your low-cost ones aren't really going to have that. Another thing to look for in a logic analyzer is input threshold settings. Now, uh, a good logic analyzer, a higher quality mid to high range one, will actually have adjustable threshold levels. They'll actually have a DAC inside them that you can actually set this level, uh, each of these levels, anywhere from, you know, uh, minus, it might be minus 5 volts up to plus 5 volts. And you can do the same thing with this as well. You can adjust the threshold level. And that's, that's really useful. But once again, uh, they will have quick setup options for like CMOS and TTL and uh, low voltage CMOS and all that sort of stuff. But uh, generally you might have to fiddle around with those. But they're very flexible. Now the other type will just have fixed um, thresholds, because they'll just use a simple, uh, you know, a three volt uh, a gate on there, you know, they, or they might use a, like a five volt, uh, just a logic gate straight on the input or something like that. And really, these thresholds are going to be fixed. And that's what you get. That's the disadvantage of the low priced logic analyzers. So there you go. That's logic analyzers. Don't be scared of them. They're a valuable tool. They're not used very often, but I highly recommend you get a, you know, a simple USB uh, logic analyzer and keep it in your kit drawer just in case.